Mason Greenwood rejects return to Manchester United. Eric Ten Hag and Rashford have reportedly fallen out and Anthony officially to be put up for sale this coming window. These are some of the topics we will be discussing on this morning's show. But before we jump into that, please smash a like on today's video, subscribe to the channel if you're new and let's get straight on into it. So um, let's start the show off with the story about Marcus Rashford then. So, I mean, Let's just read out the quote to begin with. So this is coming out from Alex Crook, who reports for TalkSport. Uh, a couple of other journalists have also reported the same thing. A couple of uh, uh, people from the Daily Mail, someone from The Sun, albeit maybe not the most reliable sources. So we have to take this with a pinch of salt. Um, but the headline is, a well-placed source has told us that the relationship between Eric Ten Hag and Marcus Rashford is particularly frosty. So frosty obviously means not good. It's, you know, they're at breaking point. Um, I mean, are we really surprised by that? Like, Marcus Rashford doesn't give 150% on the pitch. He doesn't track back when he loses the ball. He looks like he doesn't care. He sulks. He walks around not like a 350 grand a week player. I mean, if you're his manager and he's only scored five goals this season in probably about, what, 30 games across all competitions, are you really going to be happy with him? And vice versa. If you look at it from Rashford's perspective, Eric Ten Hag got rid of his best friend, Jadon Sancho. He banished him from the team. He, you know, he was making him eat his packed lunch in the car, reportedly. Um, and then when this whole situation happened with Marcus Rashford clubbing in Belfast, Eric Ten Hag threw him under the bus a little bit. Uh, and that could have gone either way. So are we really surprised that these two have fallen out? Marcus Rashford thinks he's killing Mbappe. He isn't. He's a, he, let's be honest, he's an average player, a world-class player on his day. But his day is probably two games a season. Um, so, yeah, I don't know what to make of this. I, I just think that this is just the beginning of the end for Eric Ten Hag. We know how much power Marcus Rashford has at Manchester United, mainly because of his off-field activities, in my opinion, you know, his charity work, his brand, because he's, you know, a local lad, all the rest of it. Marcus Rashford is bigger than Eric Ten Hag, realistically. He is, isn't he? He's more powerful than Eric Ten Hag. And as soon as Eric falls out with these types of players, I think it's going to be very difficult for him to come back. Now, in my opinion, Marcus Rashford should be sold in the summer, without a shadow of a doubt. I think if PSG are genuinely interested in him and are willing to pay, you know, 80 million plus, I would sell him in a heartbeat. I don't think he has the right attitude to play for Manchester United. For someone who's, you know, born in Manchester, grew up a Manchester United fan, came through the youth academy, he sure doesn't play like that. He sure doesn't act like that on the pitch. He sure doesn't show any integrity or any desire. He looks like he doesn't care. He's just happy to cash in his 350 grand a week contract and go out drinking on a on a, on a a school night. Obviously not a school night, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, that's my take on Marcus Rashford. But obviously... Let me know what you guys think about Rashford in the comments section. Obviously, you know, until a player isn't our player anymore, I'll back them. I hope he plays well tonight against Nottingham Forest. I hope he gets a goal and assists and, you know, does something. But going into that game, I'm worried. Um, but let's move on to the next story. Let's talk about Mason Greenwood then really, really quickly. Um, so this is coming out from The Athletic, obviously very, very reliable uh, outlet here in the UK. And they are reporting that Jim Ratcliffe's words have reached Greenwood, but sources close to Greenwood with an understanding of the player have said that even if Manchester United could facilitate a return, he would not accept it. It says Greenwood felt whatever the public perception, United could have supported him better over his case and is said to harbour no great desire to play for Manchester United ever again. I've, I've said stuff like this to, to people on the shows before where I've said, do you guys really think Mason Greenwood wants to come back to Manchester United? You know, whenever I'm having this argument of should Mason Greenwood return or not, there's always people saying, oh, he has to come back. He's our best player, blah, blah, blah. Mason Greenwood is a generational talent for sure. He, he is our best attacking player or was our best attacking player at that point. Um, but do you really think that Mason Greenwood is going to want to come back to Manchester United? Why would he? You know, his life would be absolute misery. And this is just another example of, you know, a reliable outlet almost confirming that, that why would he want to come back? He's reluctant to return uh, and he's ultimately not happy with the way that he's been treated. Um, the story then goes on to say that Jim Ratcliffe and Sir Dave Brailsford are taking a fresh look at the Mason Greenwood matter. And though they are aware of the highly sensitive situation, they have not ruled out a return for Greenwood. Uh, it says, according to sources who are speaking anonymous, anonymously to protect relationships with the club. So from what this says here, ultimately Jim Ratcliffe and Sir Dave Brailsford haven't closed the door to Mason Greenwood's return. But Mason Greenwood's closed that door himself. He doesn't want to come back. And, and why would he? I, I, I just don't understand why anybody would want to put themselves and their family. You know, he's what, 22? He's got a young child. He's got a fiance. 
every single day of his life, he, him and his family will be getting abused by rival fans. Every time he walks to the shop, the press will be following him, taking him pictures, asking him questions about, you know, whatever reportedly happened. Every press conference, he'll be asked the same question. Like, do you really think that's a life? You know, I know people will say, oh, well, you're playing for Manchester United. But still, if you could go and play for Barcelona in La Liga and pretty much live under the radar, you know, live your life without any abuse, any, you know, press stalking you and all the rest of it versus come back to Manchester United and come back to a, a, a failing, struggling Manchester United as well. It's not like we're winning the treble and, you know, it's not like we're at the top. We're, we're, we're pretty low down, aren't we, realistically, in the grand scheme of things. So, you know, this all makes a lot of sense to me, to be honest. And I, I've said this for a while, that I don't see why Mason Greenwood would want to come back. You know, why would he? Um, and people always seem to just get focused on the fact that, oh, he's a good player. He has to come back. Like... That's not how the world works. You know, everybody, everybody's human. People have families. People have, you know, other things that they have to consider. Um, but let me know what you guys think. Do you think Mason Greenwood will return to Manchester United? Would you want him back at Manchester United? Or do you think um, this story that come out today has made a lot of sense that, you know, in the grand scheme of things, maybe he wouldn't actually want to come back? So let me know what you guys think. Obviously, he's got one year left on his contract. Um, we know that Getafe... Barcelona, Atletico Madrid are all interested in signing him. Um, obviously, he's come through the youth academy, so it would be 100% profit, would really help our financial fair play situation. So for me, it's a no-brainer, but obviously, I always like to see what you guys have to say. So get in the comment section. Would you like to see Mason Greenwood back at Manchester United? Um, moving on to the next story, let's talk a little bit about Anthony. So this story, again, is coming out from uh, Alex Crook, TalkSport. He's saying that Sir Jim Ratcliffe has identified Anthony as a player he is willing to offload, even though he knows Manchester United will not recoup anywhere near the £86 million they paid Ajax for his services. I think maybe selling him right now is a bit stupid because of the financial fair play situation. If we were to sell him for 86 million, sorry, if we were to sell him for 30 million and paid 86 million for him, which we did, that would be a 56 million pound loss on our books, which would really mess us up in a financial fair play perspective. So for me personally, I, I would probably say loan him out to a good club, maybe in Europe, maybe in Spain, maybe in Italy for one season. Hope he goes there. Hope he does well. Uh, and then try and sell him after that. But that's just my opinion. Um, I don't think Anthony has a future at Manchester United. I think he's been here, what, nearly two years now. Uh, last season, he was okay. You know, I'd say he was probably like a five and a half out of 10, six out of 10 across the whole season. This season, he's been terrible. Obviously, he's had this these off the field issues and allegations against him, which obviously won't have helped. Um, but yeah, for me personally, I don't I don't think Anthony has a future at Manchester United. I don't think he's good enough. And um, yeah, I think, you know, getting rid of him is the correct decision, but it's just whether you loan him for a bit just to hope that maybe his transfer fee would then go up in the long run. But yeah, that's just my opinion on it. Obviously, let me know what you think about Anthony. Do you think he has a future here? at Manchester United. Let me know in the comments below. Um, right, let's move a little bit on to some injury news for you. We have got an update ahead of the game tonight against Nottingham Forest. Ericton Haag has confirmed that Harry Maguire is out. Uh, Rafael Varane and Bruno Fernandes are doubt. I mean, I don't, I don't know what to think. I mean, the defence is probably going to be Lindelof, uh, Johnny Evans, Willy Kambuala and Dallo. I would imagine. Yeah, I don't know. I, I'll be honest, like, Bruno Fernandes being missing, I'd be interested to see who's going to play in his position instead. Like, because we never see Manchester United without Bruno Fernandes ever. So, like, I'm not saying I'm happy he's injured, but I would be interested to see what we can do without him. Um, I think Varane's a massive loss. You know, he's our best centre-back who's fit at the moment. Uh, Maguire... I don't know. I, I mean, it's not the end of the world, is it? But let's let's just wait and see. I mean, we have to win tonight. We do. Otherwise, I think the pressure on Eric Ten Hag is going to be absolutely immense. If we were to lose badly tonight against Nottingham Forest, that would mean no trophy this season. Probably no top four. Um, I would imagine after tonight, this is what I predict will happen. If we were to lose tonight, I, I imagine Jim Ratcliffe will either come out and say that he's going to back Eric Ten Hag and that he's not going to be removed from his position and that, you know, they believe in the project. Or I would imagine that you'll get more stories saying that they're going to remove him. And I think, you know what, guys, I think we really, really need some clarity on this because it's really, really frustrating me every single morning, waking up, seeing that Zinedine Zidane is going to be the new manager. Then it's De Zerbi. Then it's Graham Potter. Then it's the Inter Milan manager. Like every single morning I wake up to a new story saying that another person's going to become the Manchester United manager. And I think that the only way to stop this is for Jim Ratcliffe to come out and to squash these stories and to just say, we're going to stick with Eric Ten Hag till the end of the season. We'll make a decision in the summer and that be it. 
because effectively, like, if we lose tonight, we're playing for nothing. You know, we're not going to get top four, I don't think, unless an absolute miracle happens and we'll be in no trophies left to win. So I think we really, really need a clear statement after tonight's game. If we win, they need to tell us that he's staying until the end of the season or or, or then or he's not. And if we lose, the same thing needs to happen. We need to know because I'm just getting sick of every single morning waking up to us signing a different manager and all the rest of it. It's just frustrating me. Uh, and I think it will obviously have a negative impact on Ten Hag. It will have an, an impact on his coaches because they'll be thinking, am I going to get sacked? It will have a negative impact on the players. And it's just not good for, you know, the general morale around the training ground and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, that's all the talk, talking points for today's show. Uh, please don't forget to smash a like on the video and subscribe if you are new to the channel. This has been Daily Red Devil. Thank you so much for joining me on the show this morning. Uh, anybody who usually watches live, just a heads up, this is a pre-recorded video. So that's why I haven't read out any comments. Um, I will be live after the Nottingham Forest game tonight for a match reaction. So I'll see you guys all then. It'll probably be at about 9.30, 10 p.m. Have a great day, everybody. And I'll speak to you all later.